Hey, hello everybody, it's The Last Raider. We are back with another video, and today, today we are using uh, Renthamus. I know a lot of people don't like Renthamus, but I plan to monetize the bitch. <laughs> so right now, at least to help grow my channel, and use her as an example of what to expect from SJWs when they attack you. To just basically give you an idea of what's going to happen if you do a video game, if you do anything and you find yourself in opposition to an SJW, what you will expect from the mob. Because as, as Renthamus, she runs by the SJW playbook to a T. Right? She does it by the letter. So here we go. Renthamus. The $1,058,052 total of the Cyberfrog 2 Indiegogo is actually 817320 if you take out if you take out shipping and charitable donations. Here's how the full total breaks down. Now, Renthamus is not lying about anything on this. It's not her... This is what you're going to find out about SJWs. They rarely will outright lie. Unless... The, and then usually when they outright lie, they'll be calling you a, a misogynist, a rapist, or some bullshit like that. Uh, pedophile, homophobe toxically masculine, whatever bullcrap they want to throw out. That's when they're lying to you. But what Renthamus is doing is sort of a soft tone misrepresentation of what's going, of the actual data. So let's break this down for a second. One, you have to, in order to believe what Renthamus is saying right here in this tweet, you have to believe, not the data, mind you, but what she's saying. You have to believe she's right and have never paid taxes in your life. Anyone who has worked a job knows that your profit coming in, you're paying taxes on it. Ethan Van Skyver is not getting the full $1 million that he makes off Cyberfrog. He's going to pay taxes on the entire prop, on the profit margin. Okay, Whatever he takes in, that's what he's going to pay. He's going to pay taxes on it automatically. Now, if you do any kind of business, even when you're working, you have to invest a certain amount of gas in your job. If you take your lunch to work, you have to invest money in your lunch. Capitalism is the same way when you run a business. Say you, you're running a business where you're making pencils, for instance. And the way this chart is set up, if you look here close to the chart, and you see here you know, where the money is coming in at, this is like all the money coming in here, you take shipping and donations, which is what you're going to pay in order to get the uh, everything done. <laughs> that, that's what you're, you're shipping. You're going to have to pay that to, sh to ship it out there. You're, you're probably not getting that money because you're paying a shipping company to do that. But you also have to consider you're paying a fulfillment company probably if Ethan Van Skyver's using one. He's also got to pay a printer to print off his books unless he buys his own printing press, which would be a pretty Chad move at this point, <laughs> I have to admit. But he still have to pay, ink, pay for ink and paper and resources. So, she is correct in the data. However, that's the way she's representing it. Now, what she's saying here is, oh, you know, he's not taking the full million dollars. Well, let me explain how this works. If you're running a business that, you know, you make pencils, you're spending a certain amount of money on, you know, the eraser tops, the lead that goes in the pencil, and the wood. Now, you don't make your money off the business, off of the, off selling a bunch of pencils to one person. The way capitalism works is very simple. Say I sell, I make a pencil for 50 cents. Okay? And I turn around and sell that pencil for two bucks. Now, I don't have to sell a million pencils, a million dollars worth of pencils. We'll go that route. Just, just to make the numbers easier to operate with. I don't have to sell a million dollars worth of pencils to one person. I have to sell a million dollars worth of pencils to enough people, to enough individuals to make a million dollars off of it. Now, I'm still putting a 50 cent investment into my $2 pencil. Okay, and we're, we're just, we're keeping the numbers simple so everyone can keep up. You still have a profit margin coming in. I'm still investing 50 cents onto every pencil that goes out there. I'm making a buck 50 off of it. That's my total profit margin. I'm still clearing almost three times as much money as I've put into the pencil. You see how capitalism works. That's how capitalistic business works. Indiegogo, the, the Comic Gate campaign method, 
kind of turns this and turns the rules of capitalism on their head because instead of investing your money, you have the option of investing other people's money into a product that you can put out there. Comicsgate's method is the only method that allows you to do this. And it does this because, oh, you're, you're pre-selling it before anyone gets there. You're taking their money that they're sending in to a point, and then you're reinvesting that back into the company. And you, you invest that into the very small margins. And if you, you set your pricing correctly, and you run your math properly to where you make extra money, you can end up with a large profit margin when it's over with. You just pay everyone afterward. Or, or however it's done. I've not done a comic skate campaign. I've not done a comic book campaign at all. More on that when I actually do that eventually. I'm in the process of writing something pretty cool. But anywho, Ramphimus, like I said, you have to believe that you're not going to put any money into a campaign or, or spend any money ever. You have to believe that you're going to get 100% of the money back and not pay for paper, ink, printing, lettering, which I know I know Ethan's paying for lettering at the very least, and then fulfillment in order to ship all those books out. Yeah. Now, Ethan's going to have to pay for that with the money that he gets in. Everyone knows this. Now, here's where, here's where the other half part of the truth comes into play. And that is where Renfamous is only picking one campaign. Now, mind you, Renfamous's lie here is that Cyberfrog is not successful and that it's not making a million dollars. Cyberfrog is one book, one sale, out of, I don't know how many that Ethan has run, but he's done more than one. I know this much. So if we go by his by the first campaign, which, you know, this is the first campaign for Cyberfrog 2. I think Ethan did like four or five other campaigns from Cyberfrog uh, Bloodhoney, which was the first comic he did. This is the second comic. The first comic he did, the first campaign, cleared $900,000. Renfamous doesn't include these other campaigns because just in the first campaign, Cyberfrog Bloodhoney, to the first campaign of Cyberfrog Wrecked Planet, Ethan is clearing a million dollars by Ren's math. That's why we don't include everything else. Oh, he's not making a million dollars. No, Ethan's made a million dollars. It's not he's making it. He's made a million dollars. That's the key difference here. And this is how SJWs will operate. They will throw out actual data, but then they'll skew it and turn it and everything else. It's just like when the comic book industry, they got called out a while back for all the, oh, oh look, 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 we're sending all these books out. We're sending all these books out. And then people started going out in Comicsgate and taking pictures of the books that they claimed they were shipping a bunch of to comic shops sitting there in stacks like half a foot thick on the shelves. What was happening was they were shipping multiple, uh, seven or eight, almost 20 different variant covers at a time to these comic book shops and the local comic shops were eating the difference. They were eating the deficit. They'd end up with all these books that they had bought that they had to buy and they couldn't move them because they're all the basically the 20 of them are all the basically the same freaking book and nobody wants to buy the same book 20 freaking times unless you're really interested in collecting covers. But the whole time, Marvel, DC, Marvel especially was sitting there going, see, 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 we got rid of a million copies of Spider-Man. Oh, how much did you sell? Well, they didn't want to talk about sales. Then the sales numbers would come in, and they were abysmal. Here's the thing about Comicsgate that SJWs can't stand. They cannot stand that one person in Comicsgate can make almost corporate-level money and keep a good chunk of it for themselves. Mind you, you when you hire an artist, uh, and, and this, this is why it makes money. Okay, when you hire an artist, a, a publish an artist, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> my brain just my brain just froze there for a second. Anyway, when you hire your letterer, your artist, your inker, your colorist, even if you were to hire all four of those, they are only working usually on a page by page basis. You are paying them before the book has even been shipped. So you're paying them to help you design a book. All your issues shipped afterward, those are your books that you have 
ask them to provide a service for it. They make money, you make money, you turn around, you you multiply what they've done through printing, and then you ship it out, and you make a shit ton of money afterward. SJWs hate the fact that Comicsgate is successful. They want Comicsgate to die. The problem is Comicsgate is too fat to die right now. And Ethan has a better chance of dying from a heart disease at this point or diabetic coma from eating too many pies than he does of starvation right now. And that pisses the SJWs off. And as I said before in the beginning of the video, if you are a new creator getting into Comicsgate, you have nothing to fear but fear itself. Do not let these idiots screw with you on any case. If they can mess with you, they'll do it. What you need to do as a creator is get your nose to the grindstone. And as Bruce Wayne told Terry McGinnis, the Joker likes to talk. Block it out and power through. I'm the last Raider, folks. Be sure to comment in the video on how you on uh, what you think about the video. I'd love to hear what y'all think about this uh, video that I put out. Uh, if it's a format you want me to try and put up there a little bit more, I'll try to do it. I'll try to do more videos like this. Also, uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And hit the bell for notification. I put out videos as often as I can. And as always, stay safe, stay frosty. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.